friends. Uh, actually, the invasion of uh, individual's privacy, identity, and dignity. Yeah. Dignity is, uh, as I see, emerging out of uh, the crisis of knowledge forms you know, that we have been uh, increasingly experiencing in the age of uh, this internet, basically in the context of, I mean, that, that's what happens you know, whenever this uh, new technological innovation uh, is being experienced by the humanity. So I see you know, this problem, basically, what we have been discussing since morning. Uh, uh, I would like to know, link it to the changing uh, or shifting uh, paradigm of uh, knowledge. I see this. You know, what's uh, why why this happens? Because uh, see, when in the print, if we contrast uh, the present emerging uh, usage of internet with the earlier world, that's uh, print world. Let's say always there was a kind of. Uh, there has been a kind of mediation mechanism between the user and the text, or reader and the text, uh, mostly you know, mediated uh, through the educational institutions, you know, where we, we see the role of teachers in the university system, in the school system, where actually the reader or the user, you know, what we name in the present times, uh, acquires Know, some framework of understanding. I mean, that actually you know, locates an individual more solidly on the ground. I mean, he would develop no sense of discrimination, what to use, what not to use in the print world, in the textual world, which is what is increasingly getting absent in the present uh, times. So when we think of uh, you know, autonomy of uh, the user, I mean, that's increasingly lost because one, is, uh, one becomes directionless in the absence of this framework of knowledge. So I think now it's, uh, I feel it's an immediate need to ponder over you know, the appropriate uh, mediation mechanisms which can translate uh, the information that is drawn from the internet sites uh, into knowledge or not knowledge, knowledge or that is not knowledge, you no know, kind of discrimination. Because uh, I feel that in the absence of these mediation mechanisms, you no know, the credible autonomous mediation mechanisms, in fact you no know, the usage usage of internet you no know, would have disabling effects on the part of the user rather than enabling the person. So that's exactly where now this question of you know, loss of uh, dignity, rights, I mean there is an uh, enormous amount of encroachment into the individual because the one is, uh, one becomes disabled in that sense. So this is the context in which I feel uh, one should think of uh, these mediation mechanisms. So as I said, you know, what it does actually, you know, what uh, this mediation, if we can evolve some you no know, credible, appropriate uh, mediation mechanisms like you no know, university system. Uh, you know, broadly, I think we can you know, uh, place these mediation mechanisms in the context of a uh, uh, new framework of media education. So uh, I'm I'm a little uncomfortable with you no know, uh, talking of uh, media literacy, but I would prefer to use it uh, use uh, media education as. Uh, so we need to think of you know, those agency, agencies which would uh, make uh, this, you know, enable the user uh, to make the net you know, more effectively. So I would, I would come over uh, to the details of uh, you know, what sorts of uh, mechanisms that one could uh, think of uh, in the discussion. So the last point that you know, actually ultimately remains you know, who is to do that? I mean, we so far historically we had you no. Know, whenever this you no know, technological innovation has taken place in the telecommunication world, earlier to that in the print world, <coughs> uh, we we have historically experienced you no know, to you no know, three rather models, three models. You no know, one 
agency being controlled by the state, the other you know, being controlled by the market, and the third is civil society arguments. But uh, by and large, the experience with the state and the market uh, has been you no know, little uh, uh, apprehensive because uh, the question of you no know, credible agency depends upon the objectivity with which you no know, that intervenes uh, into this situation. So, in the case of state and the market, both you know we have seen already you know the kind of corporatization that's taking place in the internet world. Uh, would actually lead to you know, the loss of that you know, objectivity. You know, similarly, in the case of state, you know, we have seen you know, the state's encroachment into the you know, areas of you know, individuals' rights, liberties, and so on. So well, the third, I think, you know, could be you know, uh, uh, talked about in the, in the sense of you know, public education. So I think this model of public education would provide rather you know, the credible, autonomous uh, uh, agency that would intervene and interpret uh, the you no know, uh, create the knowledge forms which would enable the individual uh, to make use of for the sites much more <coughs> effectively i thank you all for giving this opportunity thank you very much so we have a few minutes for questions and then if i may i'll turn to the panelists and ask them if they'd like and they might like to think a bit about it now is uh, whether they might like to give um, it's difficult of course uh, or I ask the question is there a single most valuable element of public policy and that could be in the fields of you know legal technical education and so on uh, which uh, would make the world a better place the internet world of uh, um, identity management a better place. So if they might like to think about what they would say there, what would be on number one on their hit parade. But before that, we have some questions. Please, sir. My name is... Oh, could you give your name for the record? Because that's being the recorded. The Dolphins Foundation, and mm -hmm. here I represent the Youth Protection Roundtable, a project within the Safer Internet Program of the European Commission. And I have a question to the panel about the privacy of children, especially in regards to the registration process at a social community platform. Uh, children, when children are setting up their profile at the social community platform, we know uh, even if we teach them media literacy, they might not be aware of the consequences that might cause disclosing their private information. So what do you think? Should we have a process where parents know about the profile of their children at a social community platform? Should they accompany the registration process? Or would that, on the other hand, uh, infringe the privacy of the children? If the parents know everything that children put onto the mm -hmm. internet. What do you think about that, <coughs> both positions? Thank you. It's a tough one, isn't it? It's a, do you, um, would you like to? Give us yes. your views, please. Certainly, that until about the age of 11, a parent can really have an influence. But after the age of 11, it's much more difficult. You control the social profile, the profile on one social networking site, and the young person will go to another social networking site. I really believe, and perhaps this is also the answer to what your moderator is going to ask later, I believe education is the key. Uh, I believe it was St. Gregory who said, give me a child until the age of seven and I'll give you the man. And I really firmly believe in this, although I wouldn't put the age at seven. Uh, I think that if young people have received the access to the knowledge that they need then when once they become teenagers, although they still need the guidance of an adult, but this should be in the form of dialogue rather than anything else. But if they have the, the required education, they will be empowered enough to know all about accountability, uh, accountability responsibility, and elements like that which are really going to determine what's put on a social networking site and what isn't. So education for me seems to be the answer rather than getting the parent to sit aside alongside the young person and tick the box to say that they agree. Do you think that uh, that 
uh, axiom about give me a child up to the age of seven uh, um, applies to all home contexts or uh, is it uh, you know a western construct do you think um, I've only lived in the western world so I can't answer for any other world however I think that it's Yes, it does apply, but it's somewhat broader because it also means that the relationship between the adult, between the parent and the child, the family context will be established. And the most crucial element here is the family context. So if a young person is searching for information, if the parents take no interest whatsoever in having a look from time to time at the search his history, if they take no interest in talking with the young person about what they're doing on internet, then I'm afraid that we've launched a young person without the right tools, without the knowledge that he needs into society. The family is always important throughout life. So I think this axiom takes into account the broader relationship, and it's this relationship that's going to help the child choose the right path. Thank you. Uh, the social networking site per se, but I think what you also find is there are a number of options, for instance, uh, through our foundation we have one called ThinkQuest, where you develop online learning environments that are either parent or teacher mediated in schools that help actually create some of those foundation tools so that when kids do go on some of these sites they are more enabled to understand what to do and how to do it. And I think. Uh, the examples of, of some of the work that the Council of Europe's done in those learning books are, are a great example also. So I, I think you know some of those media can help inform the children, I think, uh, as mm -hmm. was suggested just now and by one of the earlier speakers, the role of the parents is important also. Uh, the, the one thing I will highlight, which is a problem, and uh, you joked around maybe we need a video for the parents, I, I don't think that's a joke. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're in a situation where the kids know the technology so much better than the parents that in some cases the parents have less of a capacity to exert influence and control because they don't know how to discuss the issues online. So I think that's perhaps an issue that no one has tackled well enough yet. So any more comments or thoughts from, from you, please, lady in the front? Could you give? Activist on child protection online. So I would like to ask if there were um, uh, projects uh, which have been evaluated in terms of media education. So uh, what is the uh, effectiveness of media education in terms of child protection online? Thank you. Uh, could you explain what you mean by no, mediation? Basically, uh, education, uh, pro evaluation, ev edu education campaigns in uh, schools uh, have been taking uh, ah. places in many fields. I know, alcohol control, sub substance abuse control, and they're typically being evaluated. Yes, and we yes. know this particular program decreases tobacco use 15 percent, and this one, 1 percent. So has, has there been something like this for, uh, for unsecure behavior online? So what do you think, third party mediation? No, it's absolute necessity to have uh, appropriate uh, evaluatory mechanisms you know, when a uh, user is uh, making use of uh, the net resources. Uh, but the question is that you no, know, we have been actually thinking you know, what sort of credible agency that could actually mediate. That's the most important question. Evaluation, actually, you know, we had you know, some kind of uh, evaluation system in the earlier uh, uh, forms that you, know, you can uh, say you know, uh, university or uh, school system. We have examination system. And then ultimately, no, but you no, know, we, we had problem with that you know, education system also you know, earlier in terms of objectivity, objective evaluation of uh, uh, the things through the examination. But no, here, the question, I think, no, the first, no, we need to think of objective agency. Objective agency, I think, no, needs to be derived uh, no, from the no, existing uh, educational institutions uh, and no, also the family environment. I think these two play a no, major instrumental role uh, in, in, in mediating uh, you know, this uh, situation. Right. Please, uh, lady at the back. Please. Enaxo. Um, we work with children uh, in the UK as NSPCC. Um, to, and I'm particularly interested in this issue of, of uh, protecting vulnerable children. 
we work with children and we find that when they're using ma the major social networking sites that are popular in the UK, many children realize and want to post up uh, information about themselves and they want it to be public. But at the same time, many children don't realize um, that when they sign on to the so major social networking sites, how available their information will be and their photos will be to the wider world. And obviously I echo, I mean, I would completely agree with the comments of the panel about how central media literacy or media education is to this whole uh, thing. And when you're talking about more vulnerable children, that becomes even more important, how we do that. But I'd just be interested in the panel, we had a bit of a debate in the UK about technical safeguards and the role of technical safeguards. Um, and a debate about whether profiles should be screened to private by default for major social networking sites. So this isn't to suggest that children can't disable that default setting should they want to choose to understand what it means um, and, and have their information public to the world if they want it. But when they sign up, um, their, their profile would automatically be screened to a def a private as a default setting. And whether the major social networking provider should, should offer that. And I'd be interested, because I've heard a lot about um, the education side of things, I, I'd be interested to hear what the panel think about where responsibilities lie um, there. Okay, because we haven't got... And we deal with education and culture, and we are in 30 countries. So I'd like to just affirm what the lady from the, EU, from the European Council has mentioned, that in all this issue of security and privacy of children in the net, I think education is the key. And, uh, and therefore, I'd like to know, you're commenting about this Internet lit Literacy Handbook, and also from Google, the person from Italy has mentioned that you have created tools. So I'd like to know, are they published or they are available online? Because it would also be good that knowing that, let's suppose you are having them in hard copies, we can approach your offices anywhere, and we can uh, apply and, uh, and get them. That's one. So I'd like to know where, where, where can we obtain this. And another point is, in the aspect of formation of identity, I um, agree fully also that uh, this, can, this is forged even outside uh, the virtual uh, world. So if the identity of the children already is like uh, solidly formed in the classrooms or even in the families, uh, you were mentioning that the family year is also key in the development of a person's identity, then already when they go online, this would not be uh, uh, like, uh, it will not pose a very big problem because the person themselves already are like imbued with all these um, values that they have acquired in their families, in the schools, and therefore the, the call is to consider education in the broad aspect, which is not just online. Yeah, I agree that ICT is important, but I also uh, agree that there is a call today of an education that is to be quality education that will really cater to the integral development of the person. Thank you. Yeah, so we had that. Uh, go back to this issue of profile screening and uh, ask uh, Joseph and Mario what they think from as experts, please. <laughs> Could so you could be a great solution uh, to implement uh, this, uh, this solution is, is if all the industry agrees uh, and uh, if there are no, uh, no other issues like privacy because uh, if uh, we, we want to provide this as default, we need to know if the, the person on the other side is, uh, is a minor. So if we need to know if the other person of the other side is a minor, we need to have more information about him. In, in relation to where you can find the tools and the information that we want to provide, uh, um, about child protection, uh, about uh, sa the safety search, uh, you just click on preference on uh, the home page of Google and then you have all the information about how to put as default uh, safe search as a, as, a, as a tool. And for the online family uh, booklet, we, are, we have a printed copy that we are developing in the country where we have an office, but we are also working on uh, a sa child safety center online that we are going to launch very soon, so you will know. So we might put into... I mean, I think one of the default setting, which uh, I think Mario has pointed out some of the issues that may come up with the default setting, you can also make the registration process show a warning so that actually you're kind of, the education is in some way forced as part of the registration process. Um, again, you know, that's, those are the kind of things that may or may not be helpful, and I think the concept of a little bit of trial and error to see what works for both the community and the market 
uh, make sense. But I think this is a dialogue at the Data Protection Commissioner's Conference recently in Strasbourg. There was also the dialogue of trying to figure out um, how you do proof of age on, on some of these services, for instance. So I think this is a burgeoning dialogue, and I think it's an appropriately multi-stakeholder dialogue. Uh, and I think one of the things where you have to include this, and it's interesting that social networking engines may be an interesting place to do this, is it should be a discussion within the community of that social network also. Because the tool, th the way you impact the tool may affect the uses by those people who aren't children. So it's also interesting to see how the community feels and reacts to that. And you know, one of the things that might be interesting is for the network sites to actually have a threaded discussion of some kind on this to see if the community actually comes up with things because I think in many cases we are less creative than the community can be in solutions. And so it would be interesting to see if they brainstorm their own solution set because they understand how it's used better than we do. Thomas, uh, you're creative too. Please. Um, I just want to make, if you allow me, a few comments to, to, to also the question of, of, of the uh, lady from, from the UK. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say that, uh, and I guess everybody agrees that empowerment and media literacy and education is the key. But being a government, at least in, in, in the countries I know, people expect the government to protect those that are not reached by these uh, education processes and empowerment processes as well. Uh, and this goes for the, for the offline world as well as the online world. So the question is, how do you reach those? And, and is there, and there are people who are, who are uh, demanding new laws, new laws, new laws, other, and, and like the tendency in the countries I know is that let's try kind of soft regulatory tools first, let's try and seek uh, cooperation with the industry and see whether the, 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 the problems get fixed uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a more flexible way than a law, uh, a better. The, this remains to be shown whether this is enough or not. This is something that is a, is a, is a constant question that we have to ask ourselves. Uh, if you allow me one word with, with regard to, to the pri privacy settings, and I, I think those are, it's also a question of trust. Do you trust a service? Do you, because you know the company that it stands for this kind of quality or this kind of, of uh, uh, attitude? And if you look at the search engines, there are different, there, is, there are examples of search engines that have different privacy rules or different transparency over their privacy rules. These are search engines for adults, but there are also search engines for kids, for instance, that have different uh, uh, principles with regard to advertising that might be harmful to children and, and so on. And <clears throat> in, the, in the Council of Europe, things like that are, are being discussed because these, these questions come up in, in most of the European countries. And, and there are proposals for promoting the idea of walled gardens for children and the German example is a very good one where you have industry, me, the media industry but also the telecom industry working together with the government in order to create a safe environment for young children. It does probably not work and is not intended for teenagers but to, to give a, an entry into the online world where parents trust <coughs> to create walled gardens. We are discussing the, the possibilities of introducing labeling systems for content that could also be used for search engines or for social networking sites where <clears throat> by signing up to a label or to an initiative uh, that you are, uh, say, we adhere to certain principles. Of course, these things are problematic and it should be clear that those uh, labeling systems which can be used for filtering, of course, and the wall gardens, they should not be abused for censorship and restriction of, of, of freedoms uh, which, which are not appropriate. This, this is the fundamental point. Otherwise, people will not trust those labeling systems either because if they are too restrictive or, or censor the wrong things, then they will not work out. But these are the issues that we discuss and we try to come up with as with, with, uh, simple as possible tools that are useful to parents and, and so on in order to prevent to make laws which are not suitable for, for the whole uh, community. Thank you. Okay, and then if you want to, uh, he, has, he has a piece of paper and you can see him afterwards, he'll give you that. Janice, could you tell us once more how to get uh, to your tools? Yes, but I would like to go back a step before evaluation, if the person who asked about evaluation goes on to EU Kids Online, they'll find that about 400 different evaluations from, and studies from across Europe have been brought together with some very, very clear guidelines on where we should go in that direction. I'll also cheat a little here and go back to Zoe's question. I really believe that if there is a default setting it's already an infringement of a person's rights. 
Children need to be, or young people need to be encouraged to make choices. It's a fundamental <coughs> right to make a choice. Therefore, I believe that it should be obligatory to make a choice of private or non-private, but certainly that it shouldn't be a default setting of non-private. So, where do you find these tools? For the Internet Literacy Handbook, I can give you the, um, the web link, but it's very long and complicated. You can, yes, Google Internet Literacy Handbook. <laughs> <coughs> A plug for Google. Uh, at Council of Europe, but if you'd like to come to speak to me, I'm not sure what country you come from, but Bulgaria is a good example. They saw the Internet Literacy Handbook, decided that they wanted to translate it. The Council of Europe then agreed and permitted them to translate it into Bulgarian. The same with the game. It can be translated into your language if you wish to undertake this. For the game, go to Wild Web Woods. Is that one word or three? One word. Okay. Dot org. Thank you. Then finally, just like one sentence, if they would be so kind from the panelists, including the two in the front row before me. If, it's an unfair question. If you had to suggest a single element of public policy, uh, I hope you don't all say education, but you may do, of course, education, technical or legal, uh, which would uh, make identity management uh, more in the public interest. I know that's awfully vague and well ill-defined. Uh, what would it be? But I wondered if, uh, if you'd mind uh, 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 giving us a sentence on that. So if you'd like to give a microphone to Marco in the front row, first of all. Pass for parents uh, to, to go online with the children together. And so both uh, live this experience and so have uh, this uh, personal uh, check of the identity of who is going online. Okay. Dr. Krishna? The existing institutions you know, tend to get outmoded. The same thing is happening in the you know, context of internet. You know, what sort of institutions that we can think of uh, should be the first thing you know, that uh, you know, comes to our mind. Uh, no, no, well, the, no, we in fact you know, see very you know, clearly uh, experience you know, the way the teachers are getting out, uh, outdated you know, for the students you know, who are more increasingly actually uh, taking to internet resources. So we in fact know in our universities, more so it's, uh, it's true in the, in the case of third world countries where the teachers know seem to be lagging behind in making use of these resources. So in that uh, case, now we should actually think of you know, re-gearing uh, the existing uh, educational institutions to make uh, the mediation you know, more effective. Uh, that's one you know, suggestion I would like to make. The second is that you no, know, in fact, you no. Know, some somebody was suggesting uh, the evaluation system on the net. Evaluation uh, sites in the net, you no, know, should be somewhere, you no, know, and some in some uh, somehow must be linked to you know, the evaluation evaluatory mechanisms uh, evolving from the educational system in the real world. Thank you. Thank you. So quite, quite small from what you've already done in Korea or elsewhere. Um, Could you press the microphone button? Okay. Yeah, as I made a presentation, I'm, I think we need to be very careful to like make a proper categorize on between which one had to be given to the users as a technology infrastructure and which one should be given to users as their own choice. In the case of a career government nowadays uh, try to implement very strict regulations like uh, to promote to uh, like protect like pro privacy or children protection those kind of things i don't want to i don't want to government or other organizations to use the kind of uh, valuable things as their like regulation tools Okay, 
Janice? Obviously, I'm going to say education, but I'm going to qualify that a little. Teacher education seems to be most essential. I think that mediation is key until the young person actually becomes autonomous. I know that not all teachers, not all parents are capable of this. Therefore, I think that we should be able to provide helplines and promote helplines so that there is always a place where a young person can go go to and get that mediation and get that support until they do reach the point of autonomy. Thomas? Thank you. Um, so to give you a, a complicated answer to your, your simple uh, question, uh, I think the solution is, is a several pillar policy. Like if you, if you take the, the drug problem that we have in, in, in the Western society, including alcohol, the basic the principle is tolerance and empowerment, but there are some effects or some substances which are more dangerous than others, and there you might have to have a law. But there are cases where the law doesn't work, so you might have to have mediation processes and things to help those vulnerable uh, groups to, to, to somehow survive and move along. And, and uh, if you allow me the answer to, to, to Marco, of course you're right, the parents should, should stay uh, next to young children, but in my country, which is not the poorest country in the world, we have a part of a population, especially migrants from uh, Central or Southeastern Europe, where both parents have to work more or less day and night in order to, to, to get some uh, food and to pay the flat for their families, and they are probably not able to stand there, and for those, especially for, for the vulnerable groups, you have to find other remedies, and, 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 but, but kind of law should be the last resort. We should try to find more flexible solutions, like I already said. Thank you. Jaron? I also, I also believe that a multi-pillar mm -hmm. modeling should be the solution. And you may find my analogy simple, but with this pen, I can do so many nice things and so many evil things. So while applauding me for the nice things I've done, mm -hmm. are you going to blame the pen for the bad things? That, that's the whole point. I think the whole point with internet governance is that you should enable a transparent internet, which uh, free flow of data is an essential element, but also you should provide tools for accountability. But sometimes with really good intent, while well, especially uh, drafting legal provisions, which happen in my home country as well, we have some rather unfortunate consequences. Don't get me wrong, of course, vulnerable parts of the society, such as children or minorities or people with disabilities, should all be protected, but with effective legal tools which are not excessive, which are not restrictive of uh, fundamental rights and freedoms. Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the lady just reminded me about the time, but if you were 15 seconds, please. All and uh, limitation of access are the most effective. So basically, I believe indeed we need multi-pillar solution, and we do not have to rely only to uh, education. Thank you, uh, Joseph. The legal level, and you have to have the use of technology that supports them, and and it's so it. Oddly enough, I agree with Thomas in my conclusion. <laughs> so that's a nice ending. People, processes, and technology together. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry to keep you. Thank you very much for coming this morning. Hope you found it was interesting. The meeting is closed.